Like what right now, on spot, what's the best tip to making videos? Don't delete the channel. <laughs> One of the most important things is just getting the shot. So no matter what phone you have, what camera you have, the important thing is actually just get some video. And, uh, that's the thing right there. Moving up to a camera with full manual control and interchangeable lenses though can make a big difference. The camera we're using is the Sony a6300. While it is a little bit pricey, you do get a lot of really nice features, including a small body, and most importantly, a really nice looking 4K image. One of the big advantages of shooting with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera are those interchangeable lenses. So right now we're shooting on a very wide 10 millimeter lens. However, move over to this Sigma 35 millimeter lens and we're getting a completely different look. So the background is much more compressed and we're getting a shallower depth of field. Now the actual look you want to go for is completely up to you, but the ability to change lenses can make a huge difference to your shot. Shutter speed is also important. Since video is nothing more than a series of still frames play back quickly to make it look like there's actual motion, having a little bit of blur in between the individual frames helps to really sell the effect. So typically you want to shoot at a shutter speed that is double your frame rate. So for example, if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you want a 1 60th shutter. Same thing, if you're shooting 24 like we are right now, you want 1 48th or 1 50th on the shutter to give a nice smooth effect. This is what you don't want to do. So we're now shooting at 1 500th of a second shutter. And as you can see, the effect is a little bit choppy. It's just not a smooth video look. Next, we have aperture. This is simply how much light the lens is lighting into the camera. So a wider open aperture means that you're collecting more light, but also means that you're getting a shallower depth of field. By closing down the aperture like we've done here, we're letting a lot less light into the sensor. Now that can be helpful on a bright day like today. However, on the flip side, that means that pretty much everything is going to be in focus. Next up is ISO. This is digital gain. So you can think of it like the brightness filter in Photoshop. You can turn it up and you're going to get a brighter image. However, typically that means that you're going to also have to trade off with noise in a darker area. Lower ISOs are basically always better, but sometimes you just don't have a choice. So with a newer camera like this A6300, you're getting the ability to shoot in fairly low light and with a really clean image. Yeah, I didn't actually have a camera when I first started making videos. I took screenshots from my iPod oh. and I did app reviews. So I didn't actually have a camera until probably like six months into my channel, you get started. That's the most important part. All the crazy, fancy, expensive gear in the world will not make the video for you. You still have to do it yourself. Skills will come with practice. Absolutely. I'm staring at the microphone right now. Something else that's important is audio. So while if you have good audio, most people probably aren't going to notice. However, if you have bad audio, it's basically a deal breaker. To get better audio, you really do need to get an external microphone. So this is what the end built mic on the A6300 sounds like. It's sort of decent, but it's really not ideal. Now you're hearing me on the Rode Video Mic Go. This is an inexpensive mic that makes a huge difference, and it'll go on pretty much any camera that has a mic jack. Another option is to use voice memos on your smartphone. Now this might seem a little bit goofy, however it actually works surprisingly well. Now you are going to need to do a little bit of work to sync the audio after the fact in editing, however it can sound way, way better than your camera. If you really want to go crazy, you can get a shotgun microphone. So this is going to get you the best quality, however it also means that you need to plug it into either a camera with XLR ports or an external audio recorder. No matter what you're using for audio, you want to be mindful of levels. Levels, 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 levels. So if it's too loud, you're never going to get that audio back. However, if it's a little bit too quiet, you can always bring it up a little bit in editing. And editing is one of the most important parts of making a video. So there are a lot of different editing softwares that you can use, but these are some of my favorites. A great option is DaVinci Resolve. Now this actually started out as a color grading tool, however they've since added a lot of great editing features. And the best part is, not only is it free, but it works on both Windows and Mac. Another great option on the Mac side is iMovie. Not only is it free, but it's a lot easier to use. Especially if you're new to video editing, this is a great place to start. Stepping it up, we have Adobe Premiere, which works on both Windows and Mac. Now this is a lot more advanced. You're getting more tools, but it's going to cost you. Last but not least, we have Final Cut Pro 10, which is what I use to edit all of my videos. Now this is Mac only, however the advantage is that the performance is second to none. Once you get into editing, you're probably going to want graphics, and that's where Graphics Stock comes in. We're awesome enough to sponsor this video. For example, the beginning of this video was shot in San Francisco. So I can go to Graphics Stock and pick out a royalty free image to use in my video without needing to worry about copyright. There's more to it than just stock photos as well. Graphics Stock has tons of other options including illustrations and vectors which are perfect for video. If you're getting into video, you should definitely check out Graphics Stock at the link in the description or by going to graphicsstock.com slash YouTube to get a free seven day trial. You can get up to 140 free pieces of content, so you might as well give it a try. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to drop a like on the video and I will catch you on the next one.